This podcast features genetic testing for autism. Our faculty member is Dr. David Miller from the Division of Genetics within the Department of Medicine. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about autism spectrum disorders and genetic testing that's available for children with autism spectrum disorders. Autism is really a collection of multiple different diseases of brain development and can be autistic disorder, pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, or Asperger's syndrome. There are thought to be possibly different causes for autism spectrum disorders, but we know that genetics plays a key role in the risk for developing autism or autism spectrum disorders. Autism spectrum disorders are lifelong conditions, although some of the symptoms may improve, and that's especially true if children can be given appropriate interventions at as young of an age as possible. The American Academy of Pediatrics strongly believes in early evaluation and intervention for children with autism spectrum disorders. Their website has several resources that are helpful for clinicians who are dealing with children who have autism spectrum disorders. The AAP guidelines, which were published in 2006, outline a program of surveillance, screening, and developmental assessment for children suspected of or known to have autism spectrum disorders. Surveillance is important because it means an ongoing longitudinal observation and evaluation of children who have autism spectrum disorders. This means at well-child visits, pediatricians should be especially attentive to any signs of developmental delay in normal developmental milestones. Surveillance can also take the form of a careful assessment of family history to look for any indications that there's a family risk for development of uh, development of an autism spectrum disorder. If a concern is identified, then the pediatrician should look to a screening tool, uh, such as a questionnaire or some other standardized measure, to try to determine if the child is at risk for autism spectrum disorder. This is not a diagnostic screen. It is merely a way of determining which children need further diagnostic testing. Some of these screening measures have a sensitivity about 70 to 80 percent for the ability to identify a child with an autism spectrum disorder, but they also may have false positive results. We know that autism has a strong genetic component based on our knowledge that children who are born into a family where there's already a child with autism have an increased risk of developing autism or features of autism about 10 to 60 times greater than in the general population. We also know, for example, in twins who are genetically identical, if one twin has autism, the other twin almost always will have autism or some features of autism. So we know there's a strong genetic component. In order to find that genetic component, we often have to turn to genetic testing and an evaluation by a genetics professional to uh, find the cause in that particular family. These days, a lot of parents hear about uh, genes related to autism through the news and other sources. Although surveys have shown in the past that families are most likely to talk to their primary care provider about questions related to genetic risks in their family. So it's important that the primary care provider knows how to answer those questions or provide the appropriate referrals. At Children's Hospital Boston, we have a genetics referral service to evaluate children with autism spectrum disorders. When patients are sent in for a genetics referral, uh, they will be told about uh, genetic testing that could be available for children with autism. In addition, the medical evaluation and family history, history evaluation may identify other features of that child or that family that may fit with a pattern that we've seen in other children with autism. 
and that may give us a clue as to why that child is affected with an autism spectrum disorder. We find that genetics evaluations are important not only for helping with the diagnosis in that individual patient, but also uh, potentially with other members of the family. In children with autism spectrum disorders, uh, parents are often going from one doctor to another trying to find out why their child has autism. If we can determine through genetic test or a genetics evaluation that there is a specific cause, it often helps the family because we end that diagnostic odyssey of multiple doctor's appointments and multiple different types of testing. But it's also important because if we can find a particular cause for autism in a family, we can talk to the parents about the likelihood of having another affected child. In general, with families who have a child with autism, there is an increased risk for the next child in the family to have autism. Some genetic causes of autism in a particular family could have a recurrence risk as high as 50 percent. And that underscores the importance of a diagnostic genetic evaluation to determine the specific cause.